Hi, my name is David Nally. I'm one of the community guys at CloudStack, and I have Chirdeep with me here. He, uh, he's one of the architects of CloudStack, uh, and he's one of the really smart people that works on, on CloudStack. So we, we realized that, uh, that networking tends to be the bane of most people's initial experience with any cloud, and particularly with CloudStack. There's so many options, a lot of complexity that's there, and so we want to talk about some of the basic network architectures in CloudStack today. Um, so, so when you go to set up CloudStack, there's, there's essentially uh, uh, some choices that you have to make. And, uh, you know, historically we've advised people to start with basic, right? Uh, and, and basic really isn't simple or, or... Yeah, basic is not that easy to understand, especially because of the distributed firewall that comes with it, the security groups. Right. Which is a, quite a different concept than most uh, enterprise customers would be used to. Sure. So, so a basic, uh, when CloudStack talks about a basic networking setup, uh, that's essentially what most people would consider a flat layer two network, right? Uh, a basic network uses uh, layer three isolation. Yes, yeah, so it's layer three isolation, but it's, it's a single flat subnet. It's a single flat subnet, but because subnets are not scalable, Mm -hmm. In the sense that you typically don't have you know more than two, 254 addresses in the subnet, so we typically are you know some data centers even restricted to slash 26 or slash 28. Right. So it's so we, we recommend that you segment your data center by parts. Sure. And so when you start up your uh, VM, your VM makes an IP in that part. Mm -hmm. But your VM could be in any different part, any different subnet. And, and so your VMs are not always in the same subnet. So sure. your your, um, your VMs are all in the, in the same data center, but they could have different subnets. Can Can you explain uh, how basic networking kind of works? Uh, because most people uh, most people automatically think about VLANs when they think about networking, and they want to jump into that. Sure. So Explain so, some of the differences. Yeah, the reason I think to, to call it basic is uh, because a lot of people find it difficult to contact the network admin to configure a VLAN on their switch. And so what basic lets you do is to get away without configuring VLANs. Mm -hmm. So um, so all you do in basic is that you tell them well, what is the, the network you want the VM to be on. And then, then the hypervisor is instructed to make sure that when you start a VM, it gets that IP, mm -hmm. and then only that IP can access that network. So you cannot do things like spoof the IP address. You cannot respond to somebody else's ARP request, mm -hmm. or and so it does. So there's what we call anti-spoofing uh, protections built in at uh, at layer two, and then at layer three is where the isolation is because. Uh, you can set up rules to say, well, what can other guests talk to you? Can the internet talk to you? Can you talk to the internet? Mm -hmm. And that's where the security group service comes into, into play. Right. And so, so when we talk about security groups, this is that terminology kind of originated with Amazon with EC2, didn't that's it? That's right. Um, and so that's that's effectively uh, filtering at the hypervisor level, right? That's right. So it's a host-to-host uh, -host firewall, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and then you can tell, you know, per account, you can set up these ingress rules, which mm -hmm. says that, well, can the, inter can the internet access your application at which port? And also, which other uh, VMs in your uh, data center can access you? Right. And so, you know, from what I understand, basic networking also allows you, because you don't have the, the VLAN limits, uh, tends to be used when you need to scale really large Correct, because because with VLANs you have a limit of 4,094 VLANs in the data center. Right. So that limits you to 4,094 accounts or customers concurrently running right. uh, uh, networks in your data center. And and not to mention that the uh, the switching hardware that can keep up with 4,000. That's very expensive. VLANs tends, tends to be rare. incredibly yes. expensive. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so so. We've talked about basic. Uh, we have several others. We have we have that advanced uh, advanced virtual networking. Yeah, advanced virtual uh, takes advantage of VLANs. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what what happens is that each uh, tenant or customer gets their own distinct VLAN. And on top of the and so what they do they give it. You get
think we were talking about advanced. Uh, advanced uh, virtual. So yeah, we use VLANs to um, isolate uh, different customers and talents. Um, and then, and actually, the way the code is written, you can use something other than VLANs, but um, that's a topic for later discussion. We can use something like Open vSwitch or GRE tunnels to isolate. But assuming you're using VLANs, which is what the Q2 code supports, mm -hmm. uh, each each tenant gets their own VLAN, and then uh, on top of the VLAN, they get their layer three services like DHCP and firewalling and VPN and load balancing. Um, so it's a very sophisticated, very complete package uh, mm -hmm. where, where customers can run, um, you know, what what we call a virtual data center. Right, and so that that really gives you uh, flexibility. I know we we were talking earlier about uh, some of the services and and some of the features coming in 3.0 with truly network as a service. Right. So um, this the, the network as a service feature will allow, let uh, data center admins or the cloud admin to define which features a customer can get. Yeah. So today we have something like service offering which says well what CPU and what memory. It's like a catalog of sure. of capacity you can get. And similarly you can the the admin can now design a network offering which says well you get uh, you know VPN and, and firewall but no load balancing or you can get load balancing but but if you want load balancing do you want the sophisticated one with the next scaler or do you want the one with the basic one with which are right. So, so with advanced virtual, effectively, the the data center is providing a trunked port, and and CloudStack takes care of the routing, right? They, they provide correct. a virtual router, That's right. and and they provide, I, I suppose, for isolation reasons, they provide a, a router per account. That's right. That's the best way to scale it. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also choose to use something like a Juniper uh, SRX, which is an external firewall. Mm -hmm. What we call an external firewall feature. Uh, in which case, uh, in 2.2, uh, that Juniper firewall tends to be the word router for the entire data center. So everybody shares that. Uh, it's actually quite of neat because it makes a device which is not multi-tenant, it makes it multi-tenant. Right. And so, it, but that's called advanced uh, advanced direct, right? It's If you're using an external device? It's still called advanced virtual, but you have the choice of using an external firewall provider. Oh, interesting. So, so you're just offloading the firewall piece and not the routing itself? Hey, uh, no, it's both for routing and firewall. The only difference is you still use the virtual router to do DHCP service. Okay. So tell us about uh, Advanced Direct. Um, so with Advanced Direct, uh, there were custom, I think the first use case we came across was uh, for the MTLS use case, where mm -hmm. a customer wanted their uh, MP, it was a large telecom service provider, Mm -hmm. And they wanted their customers already using their MPLS VPN to connect their on-premises uh, network on, into the cloud. Mm -hmm. And so they were already trunking their VLANs into their data center. And now, well, what, how, how can they use the cloud to, you know, maybe burst capacity or, you know, transparently use uh, services? Uh, so we offered this so it's called direct tag where we would allocate an account, a, a, a VLAN, a specific VLAN, mm -hmm. to an account. And so the only, and then the routing and firewalling was all taken care of by the telecom service provider. Mm -hmm. So all we did was offer a DHCP service, which is what we call an IP address management service. Right. And and the rest is all, you know, offloaded to uh, whatever exists in the data center. Sure. So that's uh, that's kind of a hybrid. Approach almost to still, yeah. still retaining some of that legacy network management. Correct. Yes. There. So, so we've we've got those essentially those three models. Uh, tell us why we would use why we would use each of them, and what's some of the downsides and considerations of them. Um, the uh, the basic zone, as we discussed earlier, um, for the cloud provider, it's very attractive because it scales mm -hmm. almost infinitely. Uh, we have some customers running with thousands and thousands and thousands of hosts with this model. Um, so that's the primary attraction of that model because it scales better. Mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, unfortunately, we don't offer the same level of services on top of basic network. We don't offer VPN or load balancing. Well, we do do load balancing, but we don't get um, port forwarding. You don't get uh, uh, VPN, and there's a couple of other things you don't get. So if you want a full feature set, like you want to run, operate a virtual data center, uh, then you would use the advanced virtual mm -hmm. because you get the VPN, you get the load balancer, and everything you want. 
So we really try and, and tell people to stay away from advanced direct because that's still that legacy way of thinking, right? It is still attractive because there are some, for example, some of our dedicated guys, uh, customers who use, uh, or traditional dedicated hosting providers, mm -hmm. they have customers using VLANs already in their data center. Right. And now they're starting up this cloud infrastructure on the side, well, how do you connect your legacy customers okay. into the cloud? Sure. So that's how we use their attack for that. All right. Well, I appreciate uh, you talking to us about this. Uh, you're welcome.